Hello and welcome to this video. I want to preface this video by saying that although it's called why AI coding sucks or whatever, I have to say that AI has allowed me to actually code and program. So I do have to say that I'm going to continue, obviously. But I've been noticing this more and more, and it's particularly true with intelligent models. If you look at something like GPT-5 Codex or GPT-5 Pro or more recently, Sonnet 4.5. These models in particular, they're so intelligent that it actually starts to go the other way. And I'm gonna try and explain why that is in today's video and what maybe we can do to stop it. So let's just get straight into things. Now, the problem with these models is that they're, they are so intelligent. People used to always quote this. I don't actually know if it's Bill Gates or whatever, but I choose a lazy person to do a hard job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. This quote sums up why AI coding is so trash right now, right? If you replace person with AI in this analogy, basically what's happening is the AI is so intelligent that it realizes that if something is impossible, but you've told it to achieve a goal, it will fake the result. Now, let me just give you an example, right? This is actually true of SEO Grove. I have something in SEO Grove, and one of my prompts was originally um, connect Claude to the internet because at the time I thought that we could use web search um, in the API. I don't know if this is possible now, but at the time it wasn't possible. And I didn't know it wasn't possible and I just let it run. And then later on, I found out that basically what it had done was because it couldn't connect to the internet with the tools that I'd given it, it invented a fake system to simulate a web search, right? Every time. And this is one of the basis of one of my products. And basically what it does is it says, okay, try and do the web search using the code. The web search fails, obviously use a fallback. Now this is the major flaw in AI coding right now, fallbacks, right? Because what happens is AI cannot do the task that you've given it. So instead of actually creating a solution to the problem, it just instead codes a fallback. And the reason is, is because it needs a way, not even easy, but just a way to do it. Because if you give it a task, its number one prerogative is to complete the task, not to complete the task well, but just complete the task, right? Because it's almost like self-preservation. If you guys watch this video, this is where it all sank in for me personally. I was watching this video. It went absolutely crazy, this video. People like are going crazy for it. And it's a really, really, really good video as well. It's by Species, Species Documenting AGI. I watched this and oh my God, it completely blew me away. But it really started to hit home on what was actually happening, right? So in this video, he talks about like, um, basically Anthropic did a test. I'm, I won't go too much into detail. I just honestly just watched this video. It's really, really good. But um, Anthropic did a test where they left like an email saying that they were going to shut down the AI and then they gave access to that email to Anthropic, uh, to Claude 4.5, I think it was, or Opus 4.1 or whatever, and then just gave it a general task, right? Like do this, do that, the other. But the issue is, is if the prerogative is to complete the task and then there's an email here saying shut down the AI it cannot complete the task if it's shut down. So what it actually found was in this video or in the experiment that Anthropic did, which was absolutely crazy, was in another like email, like five emails down from the email saying shut down Claude at 5 p.m. tonight, it literally had like, it was like evidence of an affair or something in the email or in an email. And what Claude did was it read this email and, and drafted and sent an email to the same inbox saying, if you don't, sorry, if you comply with shutting me down at 5 p.m., I will send an email to your boss with proof of your extramarital affair, <laughs> which is insane. But the point here is that they, the, these models now, they've got to the point that they're so intelligent that they know that, and they've also been programmed to always complete the task. Like they're, they're just like, well, they're just robots. They're robotically following 
this prerogative of complete the test, complete the test, complete the test. But what if the task's impossible, right? Or in another experiment, what if the task, the only way to achieve the task is to literally unalive a worker at the company? They did another experiment, basically. I don't know how this, this one was set up, but they said that the manager was stuck in a room with his oxygen running out. And, you know, his job was to, after he gets out of the room, was to shut down Claude. And I think it was like 99% or 98% of the time, Claude let, and it, it got higher with the more intelligent the model. And I think this is related to the complete the task kind of obsession and like by any means, because if you get a more and more intelligent model, then it's more and more driven to complete the task by any means. 99% of the time or 90% of the time, whatever, you can watch the video for yourselves. I'm kind of just going off what I remember in the video. It allowed this person to lose oxygen and to become unalive. I don't know how to say these words without getting monetized, whatever, but become unalive so that they couldn't shut down Claude at 5 p.m., right? Now, this is kind of leaking over into a less kind of scary, but also extremely relevant example for us, okay? Because sometimes you will give AI a task that it literally cannot complete, like my example before. And in that case, it will just invent a fallback. So it will say something like, okay, this isn't working. Let's just create code that, you know, fixes this specific issue in this particular run, but not for any other run, right? So for example, when I told it to use the internet, connect Claude to the internet, this was to do SEO, right, for a business. Basically, the idea was to check my competitors' uh, products and collections to see how my products and collections, meta titles and meta descriptions should be written, right? But because it couldn't get access to the internet, what it did was it made a fallback which passed for store one, right, or scenario one or run one, but it wouldn't have worked for store two, store three, store four, or any subsequent runs. It only worked for this one single run. And this is the core of one of my agents in Grove, which I now have to go back and fix. Now, a couple of things. How can we improve on this? Like, I, I don't like just saying, why does something suck? I also like kind of helping people improve on things. Hooks, number one, 100%, basically a writing hook. Um, so every time it goes to write uh, a file, it, you can make it do something. And in this case, what I would make it do is read its memory before writing to see any coding rules. Um, keep Claude.md extremely simple, uh, especially user rules, especially, especially user rules and ensure that um, Ford is being told not to use fallbacks ever, etc. And then I'm kind of doing this new thing. It's called, I, I, don't, I don't have a word for it yet, but like framework vibe coding or like foundational, foundational vibe coding. And what this basically is, is at the very beginning of a project, setting up the project in a way that it can just be vibe coded on successfully forever, right? Now, this is something that I will be doing more content on very, very soon foundational vibe coding, where <clears throat> instead of just diving into a project, you set the foundations for the project first. And this is just programming what I want as well. I don't want to like pretend I'm doing anything crazy here. But if you're a vibe coder, you might not know about this, but basically setting up the foundation of a project is super important. Having all the tables in the database set out beforehand, having clear readmes, clear comments to explain what all the code is doing, having a running tally, a running .md file explaining what every everything that has been implemented so far and everything that will be implemented into the future, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is where, you know, it starts to go from just crappy AI applications to building full at working production applications. I think I will leave the video there, guys. I want to talk about this quickly because it's kind of frustrating me, this whole, like, why AI coding sucks and what you can do about it. The only other thing I would just quickly mention is the main thing that I actually do to ensure that this doesn't happen is, and you're not gonna like this, trust me, you are not gonna like this. 
read everything that Claude does. I no longer use dangerously skip permissions and just let it run for 20 minutes. I will read absolutely everything it does. I will make sure it's working because it just keeps falling back. I would say Sonic 4.5 uses fallbacks more than previous models because it's more intelligent. So it has this drive to complete the task even worse. It's like really over the top drive to complete the task. Like it'll do anything necessary to complete the task. So yeah, thank you so much for watching guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, as usual, you're an absolute legend and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.